Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being the show, we're talking about TV shows that are crime dramas. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Tracker, Season 1, Episode 3. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So while Coulter was on his way to another job, he ended up stumbling across one particular job, where it turns out this girl, a woman rather, uh, is looking for... Uh, the sister, what was it, Kira was her name, and she's looking for her sister Mia, which the actress who played Kira, I was like, is that who I think it is? I th I'm going to butcher her name. I believe her name uh, is Aja, Anja Sopkik. I'm probably butchering that. I want to say that's the actress who plays Scarlet in the show Big Sky. She was also in Nancy Drew. I want to say she was, what was her character? She's a ghost character. I want to say her name was like, wasn't it Odette? Uh, those are the things I kind of know her from. But, yeah, she's looking for a sister who's been missing for three months, but no one in town wants to help her. Because we find out this ties into this big-time town family who's trying to do, like, some resort stuff and they're buying up properties. And no one in the town is really doing, like, because they look at her. Like, we never found out what it was, but Mia was kind of labeled as trouble. And so everyone's like, oh, she left town, but... Kira's like, I looked into it. My sister said she was going to go to this place. I looked anywhere between this town and there. Like, there's no records. Or I can't find anything. No bank activity. No activity on our bank card. No nothing. So I think something happened to my sister, but no one else is willing to look into it. I mean, the fact is, Coulter just stumbled across the job just because he stopped at a restaurant to get something to eat. And even the lady at the restaurant was kind of like, yeah, you don't want to get involved in that because some dude just stepped up to her and was jumping down her throat for putting out so many flyers. I mean, it stems from, for one, the guy, his name is Tom. He works for the Winslow family. And it's like, he's got a family to support. And so this kind of hurts his job because like the Winslows employ him and it's kind of about making this town a more tourist attraction he plays and there's all these posters about someone being missing it just kind of puts a negative connotation to things so you know Tom kind of a d-bag about it but it's just like I hey, mean I'm trying to get by and Mia's not I mean uh, Kira's not helping by doing what she's doing but it's like hey she's looking for her sister everyone's assuming she's trouble she's already moved on but for Kira it's like she can't move on Obviously, the show sets up a lot of parallels between Kira and uh, Coulter when we find out, like, uh, she just brushes it off, but all she says is, like, their family, their upbringing, their childhood was intense, and, you know, Mia's the one that kind of runs away from it, and I guess you could say that's what Coulter does, because who knows how often he sees his mom and his sister, obviously doesn't see his brother at all, but... Because of that, like he know, like he's probably more so the Mia in the family than Kira is, because uh, Kira's the one that like stay behind and got a law degree. Like whereas like Mia's been like the more free spirited, like roaming type of person, living out of a van type of situation. So the more Coulter looks into it, the more suspicious all of this is. Cause we find out that she was dating. Uh, initially, we find out his name is Gecko, but then it turns out. Gecko's real name is Matt, which also, interestingly enough, uh, he's played by Richard Harmon. I saw his name in the opening credits. I was like, hey, uh, uh, he played Murphy in The 100. I swear there was something I'd seen him in, maybe not super recently, but fairly recently. I saw him guest starring in something. I just can't remember what it was off the top of my head. It feels, it's only, I, I can't remember, but I swear it was like something I watched last year when I had him in. I just don't remember. Uh, but either way. He's reluctant to give any answers about what happened, but he kind of says, like, right, Mia's just very, very vocal about her opinion, and she, you know, it's kind of like a firecracker, like, she'll just kind of pop off if she needs to, but, like, he said, like, right, she left me a note, broke up with me, I wanted to leave town with her, but she just kind of wanted to go it alone. And so you're like, it seemed like at the time you're kind of like, okay, it seems like he was sincere, which he was, but there was like a lot more of details he was leaving out. So. You know what I thought was kind of interesting? I didn't think she'd have any part to play in the episode in regards of like being a bad guy or anything, but the introduction to the, the Dr. Beth, I'm curious, like, part of me wonders, like, cause she's only in like two scenes of the episodes, but they were kind of setting her up like she might have popped up more throughout the episode. You almost kind of got the feeling like there might have been something between her and Coulter, like they might have ended up hooking up, but didn't. So part of me wonders, like, were there more scenes with Beth 
that were just cut from the episode. Either they just didn't fit with the story they were trying to tell. They're like, ah, or just maybe it was just cut for time. But it just seemed like, like we got her name and everything. And once again, Coulter went to her for help. Obviously, like, Scarlet would, I mean, I said Scarlet, that's her character from Big Sky. Uh, Kira would have went to her when she got injured when they were looking for Mia's van. So it's like, you, like I said, it just feels like some of that was probably just cut for time, I, I'd assume. But I, I don't know, maybe that's just me. Uh, part of me almost wonders, like, is that just the case or will we see her later on? I highly doubt that because it seems like a lot of these characters are just going to be like one offs. Because, like, well, the only reason why he's here is because he's in Springland, so he probably will, will only run into Beth here, so there probably won't be anything outside of this episode. Could always be, but it just felt like they were setting her up for more, at least to be in the episode more, and for her to only be in two scenes was kind of interesting. But, you know, once again, maybe I'm just like overthinking that. It is a sad situation, though. Like, Kira had to prepare herself, circling um, to, over to Kira. Like, she had to prepare herself. She at least said that she had prepared herself just in case she didn't find her sister. It's like, my sister's been going for three months. I think she, it's like, I think she's still in this town. And if I haven't found her in all this time, like, something most likely happened. And she had prepared herself. But, you know, and even Coulter tried to prepare her uh, at early on saying, like, right, with all this time that's going by, like, most likely we might be looking at a situation like she might be dead. But it doesn't make it any easier for Kira later on when they find her van because she's she'd even said, like, right, when they found their van, she was like, I was there was still some part of me still holding on to hope because she talks about it, how. There's so much regret she has. It's like all she ever really argued with her sister about was like, oh, how she's wasting her life and stuff. And it's like, I never told her how much I loved her. And that, that's her regret. And Coulter knows about that. And they had this beautiful conversation where she was like, does it ever go away? And he's like, no. But he's like, that regret's not 100% a bad thing because it's a constant reminder of how important they were to you, you know? It's almost that same, like, it's along those same lines as the WandaVision line of, what is grief if not love uh, persevering? So it ends up being that type of situation, you know, and Coulter says, like, what, you know, it allows you to remember those people and remind you that they meant something to you. Whether it's the good stuff or the bad stuff, none of that matters. Only, like, because that stays with you because they make you, they, it, 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 it's a reminder of how their influence helped make you who you are. And Kira was like, oh, yeah, I like that. I was like, yeah, it's, it's a very beautiful perspective on it. It's just it, it kind of staying in a Marvel vein. I will always think about, once again, the what if zombie episode from T'Challa. Even those who are gone, you know, as long as we don't forget them, they will always be with us. So it's kind of that situation. So I was kind of hoping, too. I was like, come on, we'll find out that maybe Mia's been kept somewhere. But it's like, no, we do ultimately find out she was killed. I mean, the fact is the families kind of go to such lengths to kind of keep everything quiet. Uh, while Mia and Coulter were investigating Mia's van because they found it, they got shot at. And by the time they came, well, when Coulter came back with the sheriff, it wasn't there. And obviously the sheriff is kind of like, yeah, he's in um, the Winslow's pocket, so he's not going to take anything too seriously. It's like, hey, she's gone and stuff like that. It doesn't matter if you got shot at. I'm not going to really investigate. You know, maybe there's some shell casings around here somewhere. Sure, he's not going, he's paid to kind of look the other way until he's kind of forced to, he can't look the other way anymore. But Coulter also gets some help in this episode from Rini, which I was like, yeah, I, was, I figured Rini would be a recurring character. But yeah, she comes in for support as a lawyer. She happens to be in the area, which I love that. I think it was, I think it was, Vilma had set that up and then Teddy was like, should we tell Coulter? And kind of like, ah, don't worry about it. He'll swallow his pride and will, you know, he'll know that she's good at the, she's very good at what she does. So he needs her help. She's the one that gathered all the information about the Winslows had, like they sued so many people for property damage, yada, 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 but they got sued by one dude. And turns out that dude's place ended up burning because he wouldn't sell. And that's what they su he sued them over. And then the guy died sometime after his lawsuit. But it ties into Mia's case because Mia was going to be one of the witnesses that testified for him. Saying that she saw and knew that the Winslows were responsible for burning down his barn. So it kind of now makes sense why she would be in the Winslows crosshair. But then we find out even more so like... What really went down between her and Matt, which is really tragic. It's a, it's it's a little Romeo and Juliet Romeo and Juliet esque uh, type of situation because she 
she was always about trying to do the right thing. And he, Matt, like wanted to prove to her that he wasn't like his family. So he told her about some of the bad stuff her family did, his family did. So she wanted him to come forward, like, right, testify to some of this stuff. But he wasn't brave enough to stand up to his dad. And he felt bad. He dis disappointed Mia. And that's why when the letter was left, he assumed, like, right, she broke up with me because I couldn't stand up to my father. But as we find out earlier in the episode, Kira confirms that wasn't her handwriting. Someone forged that letter to, to make it seem like she left. And so that Matt wouldn't worry too much about it. So, yeah, his family set this up. And then we quickly find out it wasn't just his... His dad was trying to nudge Mia to get out of here. And obviously, Tony, the driver, is a part of all of this. But it wasn't the father who was behind everything. It was the mom. It's like, that's interesting. Like, I kind of was kind of like... She was, like, very quiet during the whole... Like, the father kept putting up a lot of defense. But the mom didn't. Like, he... He's done some shady stuff. He hasn't done the greatest thing, but it's at least in this case, we know, which almost makes you wonder the guy that died that was like suing them was, I doubt that was the dad. I'm sure that was the mom too, like Tony Hand, because he was their fix it guy. So, but the mom, like she, she just trying to make the point of if you went with her, she would have been trouble. The fact that she wouldn't let anything go, which Matt knows that first and foremost, it's like, that's the things he's like, that's what I dug about her the most. She never let anything go. Like she fought for what she believed in. She was very opinionated and she wasn't going to let stuff go. So that's why she did what she did. But it's also like, right. I wasn't going to let my son go off with her. Like I, I, in her mind, it's almost like a, it's a win-win. I got rid of me. I got rid of our problem, but also he would have, she would have dragged my son away. And it's just like, no, like, you know, it's, you're trying to make it seem like it was all about your son, but it's like, no, it's mainly because she caused an issue for your family and would have ruined you. And it's like, yeah, you did something like that. You had her killed. It's just like, because you did some shady stuff and you got found out. And it's bad. the sad thing too is Matt's beating himself up because he's like, I shouldn't have told her anything. This is my fault. I said a lot of this emotion because if I'd never told her any of that, and maybe if I was a little braver, maybe none of this would have happened. Like, she wouldn't have had to kind of be at this alone, you know? So it's a real, it's kind of, not even kind of, it's a severe bummer. You would hope that, like I said, you would hope that she would be found alive at the end of all of this, but she isn't. It's just like, damn, dude. I mean, Kira's doing the best she can. She's going to... Coulter suggested that Kira, like, take care of the van and maybe kind of get it fixed up. Because I think that way, it's it's another reminder. It's almost like a remind, Like, you get to keep your sister with you by keeping the vehicle. And you never have to... They always keep a piece of her in some shape or form. It doesn't fully get rid of anything. Once again, those regrets will always be there. But you can... You can spin it into something manageable is kind of, you know, the message of this whole situation. Kind of makes you wonder what's going to happen in the long run from the Winslows. I mean, it's like, well, it's going to destroy their reputation, whatever it may be. Uh, that I mean, for the town who kind of re relies on the Winslow family, like, I'm sure that's going to screw up. Like, Tom, it's going to screw up his job situation. But it's like, yeah, but still, like, they were murderers. You Do you really feel comfortable working for murderers? I'm sure your wife might not feel too comfortable about that. Maybe, maybe not. So there's that. But who knows, like, what that means and, like, what the ramifications in the grand scheme of like that town of Springland, like what that's going to do because we don't know like i mean once again the wife is going down for the murder but it's still going to destroy the winslow name and that's just a lot of like regret that matt's got to live with of like yeah my mom's the one that pulled the trigger in this situation and it's also like yeah this wouldn't even been possible if my family wasn't the way that it is about making sure like feeling the need to do whatever it takes to get their way it's like we wouldn't even be in this situation if my family wasn't as contorted as it is so there's a lot of that then the husband got to live with the fact is if i call my wife committed murder got a whole bunch of lawyers that might be able to get you off to be fair you did confess to all of it too and i'm sure matt would testify against him no my mom did in fact say she killed me or had mia killed so i don't know we would never get like a resolution to that that's just going to be something out there in the ether of we don't really on that side of things we don't get the fallout only thing we got was like hey mia's body was found on what are the Winslow's other properties? That's all we really kind of get in resolution to that. Where, like, the fallout, the Winslow's, like, once again, that had to all go to court. So we won't be around for the fall of that. You can only just imagine what that would be and what that means in the grand scheme of things for that town. But I think the Winslow's won't be the powerful people that they were, that maybe they will finally um, 
loosen their grip on that town and people won't be afraid to stand up to them anymore. Like, people will kind of start doing, like, the sheriff will actually properly start doing his job from now on instead of kind of turning a blind eye. Um, I'm actually curious, too. I guess with the, I guess maybe also with the whole Kira of it all, she'll probably would move on. Because it doesn't seem like she's from this town. They're not natives to this town. They just stayed in this town. She stayed in this town looking for her sister. That's all it was. So she is going to move on now. And she'll probably, I can only assume, especially with the fixing up van element to the episode, that she'll most likely start traveling around and it kind of living a little closer to her sister's life just to kind of feel more connected with her in that capacity. I'd like to, eh, it probably won't happen, but I think it'd be nice if Kira and Matt did meet up and got to talk about her, because they're the two people that cared about her the most, and it just, you know, I, I think it'd be nice to have someone else to kind of share that with, but, you know, maybe that's me being, like, way too optimistic about that, and, you know, I, I just, I, I wouldn't want either one of them to kind of go through that pain alone, but. There's also, um, circling to the Rini of it all, we had an interesting development where it turns out Russell ended up calling her um now it's like so obviously showing how much she know like obviously Coulter probably didn't do too much talking about his personal life so it's like right Russell that's my brother it's like whoa shouldn't you be talking to him it's like I haven't talked to him in 20 years he killed my dad and disappeared so so I guess like that maybe after that night is when he disappeared so I mean, I'm, I'm curious once again we know his mom is hiding stuff um, so that's interesting too, because I'm sure that's a parallel of kind of being secretly drawn in this episode of like, right, uh, Matt's mom had a whole bunch of secrets and did some like shady stuff. And we know for a fact, and even culture knows for a fact that his own mom is like hiding stuff. So once again, I'm curious, like, has their sister been in contact with, um, Russell or not? We haven't really, we haven't met her in uh, present day, and we haven't seen what she's up to, but we know mom's been avoiding Russell's call, so um, her secret visitor last episode, we have no idea, like, who broke in to the cabin or whatever, like, we have no idea what they might have stolen, what she knows that they stole, and does she not know what they stole because she's like, I really don't know, or does she actually know and she's just lying to Coulter, it could go either way on that, but, um, Rini did offer it to help. It's like, right, what if you need help, just ask me. And he's like, no, whatever is coming up, like, I have to deal with it on my own. And it does seem like there is still a spark between him and Rini. Like, she's kind of very, like, I'll help you out. It's more you owe me. But it's definitely, like, those feelings are there, despite her anger to with him. I mean, I think she's so angry because she still likes him. It's a little frustrating that it's like, you, you, you suck, and I kind of dislike you. But the problem is, I do like you because... There's still something there. There's something fun about what we have in our dynamic. So, but I think even that conversation with Kira about because she was like, right? There's so many things I wish I could have said, like a million things I wish I could have said, and Coulter's like, right? It's always that case. I'm assuming that's more so in relation to his dad, but it's that thing of it. it but the more direct, that's the more direct correlation in a way, regret way with like regret. But I'm sure the same thing still applies with Russell too. I was about to say the correlation of her sister's not alive. She can't say what she needs to say to him. But Coulter is like, no, your brother's alive. It's just how long are you going to continue avoiding him type of situation. So um, we also don't know what was found in that file from the cult last episode. Like we don't know if like he found nothing at all or something from the guy looking stuff up last episode into him. But we probably will never really get an answer to that. I, at the time, I was kind of saying, like, it most likely wasn't anything, but who knows? Maybe they'll reference back to it being like, no, he actually did find something. And we just, I feel like that probably would have gotten mentioned maybe this episode, but maybe it'll pop up and be pertinent later on. But most likely, it's like nothing pertinent was found. He was curious, but it's like nothing enough. It was probably just a psychoanalyzation of Coulter. But other than that, like nothing, nothing really worthwhile that he didn't already know or didn't wasn't aware of, you know. So maybe it's also to be fair, they didn't have enough time to fully, fully do their due diligence. So who knows what else they could have found given enough time. But either way, obviously, I'm getting to this episode like a week late. So the next episode already dropped tonight at me or uh, the time we were recording this. If there was an episode this week, I'm assuming there would be, but. 
either way, I'm excited to see if, if the episode did drop uh, tonight. Like I said, I just assumed, but I, I don't actually know. But um, if it was a new episode tonight, I'm going to try and tr get on that at some point. Uh, just playing catch up in a lot of capacities. But I'm excited to see where all of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.